Hey what's going on everybody, in today's video what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you guys how I personally am going to be setting up a little baby leopard tortoise enclosure, so stick around. My name is Nick Pulaski. Growing up I have always had a passion for wildlife, and with that passion, along with my passion of filmmaking, I get taken on some amazing adventures creating wildlife content, getting up close with a variety of incredible animals. So come follow along as I pursue my goals of educating, inspiring, exploring, and conserving wildlife, all while having fun, seeing the beauty in our natural world. Hey what's going on everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today. Like I said at the beginning, we're going to be setting up this new baby leopard tortoise. So what we're going to be doing is I have this empty tank right here. Normally I don't recommend using aquariums for these kind of things for tortoises, but what we did to combat that is right off the bat, we blacked out the sides and the back of the enclosure. So normally you just don't want them to see out. What I did to black it out was I actually used poster board on the back and the sides. And what I'm probably going to do also is I'm going to put a strip right below the bottom right here when we're done with this build so you can see what's going on just so they can't see out. So I want it to be a little bit above their head just so they can't see out and they don't keep bashing at the glass. Normally, commonly, these guys don't do that. Compared to other species, these guys don't necessarily dig. They don't necessarily bash as much or anything like that. But we want to edge on the side of caution for these little guys because we don't want them to be hurt or anything like that. And that's the key for this. So in the past, I also did a redfoot tortoise setup. And you can do very similar things like that one too. When they're babies, they all have very common needs of what they essentially need for the first year, year and a half of their life. But what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to set this up just a little bit differently versus that one. And in a different enclosure type too. Now you can still use similar enclosure types like the concrete mixing tubs that I've used in the past too. Those are very common used ones. Um, but I'm like I said, I have this on hand and I'm going to be using this. And then over time, maybe we'll transition right over to that. But for now, this is something that's going to be perfect for this little guy right here. More than enough room for him. Definitely going to meet all his needs. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm personally going to do for the setup and go from there. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, definitely leave them down below. I love to hear it. If you guys have a leopard tortoise yourself, I definitely want to hear it as well too. I love these guys. They are absolutely adorable and I can't wait for this one to grow up and uh, see how it goes because these guys shoot up like weeds and you definitely want to grow them at a nice steady pace and we'll get into the care and everything like that down the line and I'll do a separate video but this video will all be about their setup. This guy is active and on the go. He wants to get into his new enclosure so I'm going to stop rambling on here and we're going to get to the build so let's get to it. Alright so to start this build we're going to basically build from the ground up. So to start with the ground we need something that's going to be a substrate for the tortoise. Now I like using something that's going to be not just a flat surface kind of thing because tortoises are all terrain kind of animals and you want to make sure that they're utilizing not just their front legs but also their back legs too. You want to make sure that they're building on those muscles because you don't want them to be dragging later on in life. You want them to be really gaining strength there and that all goes with proper diet, uh, vitamins, as well as I would say also the terrain that they are on. You want them to be using all the muscles they can to keep all their muscles going. So we're going to be using cypress mulch. I used this on my past build for the redfoot tortoise. I talked about that as well too. Um, it's great. It holds moisture. These guys coming from Africa versus South America like the redfoots these guys don't require a lot of moisture, but it definitely can hold moisture if needed when it's uh, misted down twice a day. Um, these guys, especially for the first year of their life, definitely want a lot more humidity, 75-80% range uh, throughout just because you want that shell to harden and grow and grow properly and everything like that. So that is when it's most important. So we're definitely going to use this stuff. It's going to hold moisture. It can dry out if need be too. You can keep this on them. I've had no issues and that's what we're going to put them on. So without further ado, I'm going to pour this in. Now, like I kind of said earlier, these guys don't necessarily dig. These guys don't necessarily burrow or anything like that. So a simple small layer, maybe about like an inch, inch and a half, that's all you will necessarily need. So we're gonna put in the rest of this cypress, like so, and voila. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to put this down and around, make sure we get all the corners needed. And I just love this stuff. It's very inexpensive, easy to get at any kind of store that's a garden store, anything like that. Like I said, you just wanna make sure that it's 100% cypress. That is half the battle right there. So again, I'm gonna clean this glass off a little bit. I'm sorry if you see some of the skeins, but this is just kind of a, a tank that's been in storage for me. But like I said, 
perfect all-terrain, not flat or anything like that, so it's going to be perfect for them to be the all-terrain vehicles that they are. So they're going to be moving all throughout here. So basically how you want to set up really any reptile is you want to make sure you have a warm side. Now on the basking side, you do want a heat element of about 95 to 100 degrees for these guys. Same with any tortoise really. And then on the cool side, you want to have a humid side, mainly with sphagnum moss. You want to probably have it so it's about in the 70s, I would say, just so they can thermoregulate between. And they are smart, they will figure it out. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a gradient here, warm side over here, cool side over here, and then he can differentiate from there. So let's start with the cool side and then work to the warm side. Now, like I said, to keep in the moisture, to keep the cool side cool and everything like that, what we want to basically use is sphagnum moss. So you can get this in bulk, like I said, with the cypress mulch, you can get straight up sphagnum moss at any real garden store or anything like that. I personally get mine in reptile shows, um, but I've gotten it in the past in huge blocks that you can get at a garden store. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting this kind of a little bit sprinkled throughout this gradient, probably this third of the enclosure. More so, we want to make sure that we have a nice humid hide on this side. And what we want is the baby tortoise to feel secure in its home. And the reason being for that is baby tortoises, like I said, they're not fully developed with their shell, so it is soft. So not only is their size making them vulnerable, but the soft shell does as well too. So they can easily be picked up by predators. And a lot of baby hatchling wild tortoises do normally get picked up by predators because they are an easy meal. Basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mimicking nature where we're going to give them a nice humid hide that they can hide out in, rest, do their thing. And um, it only helps with shell growth, the humidity, so they can get the humidity that they need and it also offers them protection and security. So we also wanna make sure we have that so the tortoise does not feel stressed. So like I said, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to take out a good amount of this and I'm just going to blanket it just because it's a baby, just lightly. You don't have to put too much down. It kind of carpets out on its own, but I just want a nice layer right here to eventually use it gets a little messy but it's not too bad it doesn't really smell that bad either especially when it's humid or anything like that it smells actually pretty good in my opinion but basically from there we're going to have all this dry sphagnum moss over here so this is going to be moistened down we're going to wet it down everything like that i do have a water bottle as well as we're also going to be i'm not going to put it into here yet but I want to kind of gauge and see how the humidity levels are without it first, but we're definitely going to put in a reptile fogger. So I did do a DIY reptile fogger in the past. I will definitely leave a link for that video above if you guys want to see how I use that, but that's how I fog all my reptiles. And it's a super cheap and expensive way too. I mean, I love my reptile foggers that I personally create. You can go out and buy one if you want to. There's some great ones out there, but I set mine up personally really quick and I just put a timer on them and call it a day and I've never had a problem in all the years that I've used. And definitely also check out the Redfoot enclosure too if you want some inspiration on how I did this also in a uh, cement container as well too that I got. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that people do this and this is just the way that I think works best for me. I'm trying it both ways and uh, if I need to I can change it. But regardless, so we have the sphagnum in place, we do have the cypress bedding in place as well too. Next thing that I'm going to probably do is I'm probably going to morph and make some sort of hide right here and then I'm going to spray it down. So basically what I'm going to be doing for this hide is I'm going to be stacking rocks like I did for my red foot and the rocks are going to basically just create kind of a cave. You can use like a half log if you wanted to as well. Some people get like those plastic at like reptile shows or stores. They get like the plastic black um, cave boxes that you can use. I actually use one for my tegu as well. He loves that. Put sphagnum in there. He goes to bed in there every night. But what we're going to be doing for this guy is we're just going to use the rocks and then a piece of cork bark on top works perfectly just like that. So super inexpensive, super easy way to make your tortoise feel secure and keep them human at the same time. So works for me, hasn't had any problems. So we're gonna be doing that for this guy as well too. So let's do that. All right, so in here, I do have a few rocks. I do have a couple more right at my feet as well too. So we're just going to be basically moving these at our disposal. I like this because it also gives it more of a natural look in my opinion. So that's what I'm kind of going for with this is something fun for the tortoise to kind of explore and go inside, but also give off a natural, cool, realistic look. So I'm going to be using some flatter rocks at the base just so it gives it some structure. And that's going to create the simple layer right there of those guys. And then what I'm also going to do later on is I'm going to put this piece of cork bark right on top and it'll just sit right flat right there. And then basically right there you have a 
easy to maintain tortoise hide. Basically, without having the cork bark in place, that's basically how I'm going to set up that hide. So the cool area is going to be over here, like I said. We're going to moisten this down. All this sphagnum is going to be damp. But then we're going to kind of move across the gradient over here. So then we're going to have the warm side over here, a nice intermediate side over here. So that's normally where I'm going to put the food and water dishes. So what I'm going to be using for a food and water dish, like you saw, that tortoise is super, super tiny right now. So you don't want something in there that's super deep that they can drown in, flip over and drown in. So I'm going to be using this very, very shallow uh, water dish right here. So this is perfect. I got these from a uh, reptile show. They sell them super cheap. And then for food, I'm going to use these clay saucers right here for flower pots. These work perfectly when they eat. This kind of helps with them like rubbing their beaks against that. So it prevents their beak from overgrowing. It's something great for them. So we're going to be incorporating both of these guys right on this gradient right here. Tortoise has never had an issue with them whatsoever. So we're going to put the water dish right there. Basically, like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two right here next to each other. It's perfect, it's nice and level, and you got yourself a tortoise enclosure right here. So he's gonna have a warm side over here, enough room where he can bask and move. He's gonna be able to determine if he wants to go into the water dish, get some food, and if he's going to also determine if he wants to be on the cool side as well too. So it's all going to be perfectly set up. When I do eventually put in the fogger, I'm gonna put it over here on this left side, and then it will just kinda transpire all throughout and kinda create a nice light mist twice a day. Then what I'll also do is I'll do a very light misting twice a day as well too. Kind of to mimic like morning dew. Now though these guys are more of a grass desert dwelling species, these guys definitely do need water in their enclosure. You definitely always want to offer them a water source. I definitely think that's important. You definitely want to make sure that your tortoise is drinking. Um, definitely want to monitor them. And it's just something that's very important for them. So just a light thing of water is always good for them to kind of go in. So clean that daily. It's very simple, it's very easy to maintain it. All right, so now we're towards the upper part of the tank. So like I said, we're going more towards the lighting aspect of things. So what we're going to basically do to start is we're going to put this lid on. So you're probably thinking, what are you talking about, Nick? You're crazy, this lid does not fit this enclosure. Right, so what I'm personally going to do is, because I have this extra lid, I'm going to put it upright like this, put the lamp on top. I like to have an extra thing of caution here just so it can bang around on top of here and I never have to worry about it basically falling off essentially. It's just an added thing of security that I like to put in place. I learned this a while ago, never had an issue with it. So we're gonna use it for this enclosure right here. Well, basically this is going to sit on top right here. That's not gonna go anywhere. Nothing's going to disrupt that. And then I'm going to put the heat lamp right on top like so. So the heat lamp will go right there. I'm going to plug it in eventually and then he's going to have the basking side over here at about 95 to 100 degrees. Now you're probably wondering how am I going to be able to tell the temperature inside here? Well personally I don't necessarily use thermostats to go inside here. Um, you can, I definitely recommend them. What I personally do because I go around and I check the temperatures of everyone daily, what I personally use that I think is more reliable in my personal opinion for someone that's constantly daily checking and everything like that is a temperature gun. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this at the directed heated spot right here, not shooting at the lamp, going inside the enclosure, not outside the enclosure, shooting inside there and checking the temperatures. I personally think in my humble opinion that this is a great way to one, interact with your animals, really get involved with your animals rather than just staring at them, and uh, really makes it fun and you're part of the process, you know? So I really wanna make sure that I'm involved, really making sure that I'm checking on my animals, checking on the care of the animals, and making sure that they're all happy and healthy. So that's what's important here. So definitely recommend a temperature gun, really great stuff and uh, that's what we're going to be using. So like I said, with the fogger and everything, I'm going to be checking the levels of humidity as well too in here and um, determining how to time the fogger and everything like that just based on misting it because I've never used it for this enclosure. So that's how I'm gonna test things out first before we put the uh, fogger involved. So the next thing that's absolutely vital for a tortoise is UVB, UVA lighting. So basically after we have the heating aspect of things, we need to make sure that we're also providing this guy a supplemental amount of UVB and UVA lighting. So what we're going to be using for that is normally you can use either, and this is what I use for my red foot currently, but I'm switching that over. Uh, you can use like the strip lightings and then the zoom ed bulbs so that the UV bulbs and use that. That is more than enough, especially for inside. If you're doing an outdoor enclosure, natural sunlight is always king, obviously. But basically because we are doing an inside enclosure in the Midwest, 
and uh, we get cold temperatures. I wish we had the luxury of keeping these guys outside, we just don't right now. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mimicking the sun's effects on health and diet. Um, basically just natural everyday um, thing cycles for these guys by mimicking nature with UVB and UVA. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to be using instead of the long bulbs, long strip bulbs, we're going to be using something from Vivtech. These guys are called Sir Sun bulbs and basically they are really nice beaming uh, bulbs that basically what we're going to do is we're going to stick it up here and it's going to beam diagonally down so we don't have to stick it directly down we want this to be something that it can impact throughout this way and um, if the tortoise wants to get in it it can if it wants to get away from it it can as well too so we're going to give it a direct source from there so that's what the next project is is putting that on so what we're going to use is we're going to use another dome light as well as a clamp so we're going to clamp that on the other corner over here and then we're going to have both forms of lighting that you need for a baby tortoise and tortoises in general so let's get to that part and these are very direct beams of light right here so we want to make sure that we're not just pushing it straight down we wanted to make sure that we're going at a gradient at like a side angle i would say so we're going to let this be pointing down kind of like a spotlight let it cover here they can determine where they want to be in terms of the zone that they want to be in we're going to lift this up so at least it's about three feet above where the tortoise is going to be or so so we're going to make sure that's about 30 inches above right here and I'm just going to basically clamp this like so right here and then that is how that's going to be so that one's going to be pointing directly downward this one's going to be pointed at an angle shooting this way the tortoise can determine where it wants to be in terms of the zone from there perfect just like that so really something simple it doesn't have to be perfect nature isn't perfect at all but what we're going to do is we have our water here this is a nice moist hide for this guy and uh, we have the warm side, the cool side over here, the UVB uh, bulb over here. We're not going to turn that on just now because I have to get the timer set up. So we're going to definitely get all that running as well as the mister on here as well too. But this is the basics that you require for these guys. Super easy, like I said, you just have to worry about having enough room for a warm side and enough space for a cool side. And then a nice intermediate uh, gradient right over here. You want to make sure that they have room to thermoregulate. And I can't stress this enough. Your tortoise and your reptile is smart. They know what they need. So as long as you give them the gradient that they need and everything like that, they will handle the rest. They know what they require. So that's just the beauty of nature. What do you say? Let's put in our brand new friend and uh, see him treks around his new enclosure. Let's go check him out. Okay, everyone, as you can see, we're doing a quick little side update here. This is a couple weeks after we put this uh, enclosure together. So just want to give you guys a quick little update. So this is Tinley under the UVB light right now, just so you can see him a little bit better. He's just waking up, just kind of picked him up from under the basking spot. We're going to put him back down where he was, just so I can show you guys some of the updates that I did, because as you can see, it'll look a little bit different slightly. So basking area, water dish area, all I really did was just I want to make note while I was editing it, I pushed the water dish down a little bit further just so it is level with the ground if you can see. Before in the video you can see that it was stacked a little bit higher but I just wanted to clarify this is basically what I did to uh, lower it. And you can kind of see that the mulch is a little bit damp right now. The uh, mister is all hooked up right now. so. It is getting a little bit damp in here, which is good for them as babies. They do require that high humidity, like I said. So this is totally fine. We are going to let it dry. It does dry pretty quickly throughout here. And uh, yeah, so we are still just, um, we kept finally calculated it to where it needs to be. But also you can see that the hide is completely different in here. So I did something a little bit different for these guys. There's two different reasons. Younger tortoises than when I got Daisy as well as being not in a greenhouse but in an aquarium kind of setup. I wanted to make sure we had a really nice humid hide in here because this sphagnum moss outside here and stuff like that, this mulch dries up pretty quickly when you can't have a greenhouse over here. Normally I would cover this with like the window screening but we don't have that luxury because it would block as the, I'm gonna use the lid as an example, it would block the light. The light can't penetrate, the UVB rays can't penetrate through the plastic or anything like that. And we don't want it to touch the uh, heat lamp itself. So we're not gonna use the window screening on the glass enclosure. I still think the mixing tubs are king, but I still think this is a totally fine setup for the meanwhile. But regardless, we do have a humid hide in here with the lid. So the sphagnum moss inside here, along with a little entrance for the little guy to go through, that's what's in here. So that's basically the changes and the adjustments that I personally made on here. The lid caps on, he can climb right on through over there, no problems whatsoever. And to kind of block it off, 
as you can see, I used that piece of cork bark over there. So that kind of just makes it look a little bit less like there's a container in there, even though you can see that blue lid. You, it just kind of makes it blend in a little bit. I mean, it's just an aesthetic piece. I can take it out if I need to. But I just wanted to cut to this and uh, give you guys a quick little update before we go back to the other video so you guys can kind of see what the progression has been for this enclosure. If you guys do have questions, obviously let me know. But after a couple weeks in, this is the changes that I made and I hope they help you. Let's get back to the setup video. He's peeking out doing his own thing right now. He's definitely really excited and really curious, that's for sure. So definitely got some close-ups for you guys so you guys can check them out. Really excited that we have this new addition in here. I'm so excited to have more tortoises. I absolutely love them. They're such incredible, super curious, like I said. They're just really personable animals. I've fallen in love with them. I've gotten the turtle and tortoise bug, that's for sure. So I'm going to sit here for a bit, watch this guy eat. Definitely gonna capture some B-roll for you guys to enjoy as well too. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like I said, I will post updates to this enclosure as time goes on. He's along right now, he sees the food. But anyways, regardless, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope it was helpful for you guys and your tortoise too. Um, if you guys have any questions about leopard tortoises, tortoises in general, like I said, I mean, I know I've just gotten into uh, tortoises throughout the coming years, but doesn't mean I don't know some of the answers. If not, I will make sure that you get the right information. I will find it for you. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you could do me a couple favors, if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it as well as hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. And like I said, definitely check me out on my social media. I'm going to be posting some updates of Tinley the leopard tortoise as well as the setup and along with all my other reptiles too and all my reptile adventures so definitely check me out there and until next time we will see you guys soon